How about school? Worst day of my life? What do you think? Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Friends, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and master educator who is attempting to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like the video, please interact with it. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Oh boy, is this great! So today, with it being the winter season, I'd like to get into a painting that's pretty topical for the season that we're in, and that is a painting by Peter Bruegel the Elder called Hunters in the Snow. So let's look at that a little bit more deeply today, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. In 1565, Peter Bruegel the Elder created this work, The Hunters in the Snow, in oil paint on a wooden panel. The work is from the Northern Renaissance, which is the Germanic region that was very distinctive from the Italian Renaissance counterpart. Now, this particular work is a part of a series, a group of paintings that is to depict different times of the year. This type of painting is very common during the Renaissance and even before in the Gothic time periods where artists would depict different seasonal things for various reasons. Hunters in the Snow, sometimes called the Return of the Hunters, has lots of little tidbits of information as we explore around the painting. So let's look around and see a few of those things that really pop out as information for us. Well, whoop de freaking do! So clearly in the work, we're focused in on the three hunters that are returning home from a hunt with their dogs. Now, if we look very closely in front of the hunters, they are walking to follow some footprints in the snow that are of a rabbit of some sort. All of the figures in this painting are very anonymous, but we can get a sense of who they are and what they're doing by their body posture, their body language. The hunters are weary. They're attempting to go down this trail, and we know this also by their dogs. The dogs are sniffing the ground, their tails are down, their paw prints are kind of all over the place, and they're trying to pick up a scent, but clearly struggling to track down the rabbit that they're on the trail of. Thanks. I needed that. Further in the distance, we see some villagers outside of the inn. We see men, we see women, we even see a small little girl. The villagers in front of the inn are starting a fire of straw to create a bit of an open fire that would be used to singe a pig. This is a practice that is both used for poultry and pork in this case to remove any excess hair and things of that nature off the body of the pig during the processing of the animal in order to get it prepared for consumption. And what is depicted on the sign of the inn, which is broken, it is St. Hubert and a stag. St. Hubert is the patron saint of hunters. Side note, St. Hubert is also the patron saint of mathematicians, opticians, and metal workers. Can you hear me, boy? The wording on the sign is Dutch, which translates to, this is the golden deer creating a bit of a religious sentiment about the in itself. The dilapidated sign has a bit of a foreshadowing of failure, but yet the people that are there in front of the inn provide no services, provide no sanctuary to the hunters that are still trying to track down this small game. But the spears that they are carrying are not intended for small game. This would have been what would have been carried or used by hunters that are trying to hunt down bears or deer, not small game like rabbits and squirrels and whatnot. On one of those spears hangs a fox, and the bag that is being used is intended for small game like birds. So it is clear that they are hunters that are not equipped to hunt what they're attempting to hunt. 
they're in a desperate situation. It shows their ignorance, perhaps, but also their desperate need for food. Yeah. That's good old-fashioned poverty. And as the hunters move forward, they look down into the valley, down into the village, where they see people at play having fun on the ice. If everybody is to be able to have a good time, they have to be able to eat. So the hunters have to be successful, even though they're coming back basically empty-handed. So the painting itself has a bit of a sadness about it, a grayness, a realness that we don't often see in paintings where you see the good and the bad interacting together. Now as we look at the broader landscape, the mountains and the panoramic image that we see in the background is interesting because it does not exist. This is a completely fabricated landscape by the artist Peter Bruegel the Elder, so we know that he is simply telling us a story of this, not really depicting a real place or a real event or anything like that. You ought to have better sense than that. Also inside the work, we see two species of birds. We see crows and we see a magpie flying through the air in the upper portions of the image. Crows have a somewhat dark or sinister reference, but so does the magpie, which during this time would indicate something associated with hell and the devil. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. One of the really great things about Bruegel is that he really shows a wide range of what it was like, even in a fictitious way, but does paint a picture, pun intended, of what it was like to be in the Renaissance, to be in the average place during this time, which most painters really did not do. But we see a bit of a window into what it may have been like with people skating and sledding and playing games on the ice. Now most artists of this time, as mentioned, would focus more on the more wealthy individuals, the higher society that would be paying for the commissioned work and offering his services as a painter to imitate something more prestigious. But Bruegel would continue this tendency to paint poorer elements throughout his life. Oh man, I love that piece of work. Thank you for joining me uh, as I explained through that. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. You have a great day. I'm sorry. I had a...